My mother-in-law asked me to print her a new brake handle for her wheelchair. And while I had it, I looked at it and found a couple of other problems, including one of the spokes broken. There didn't seem to be a lot of strain on the spoke, so I thought I could print a splint for it. I started by tracing the flange of the spoke on a piece of foam core. And then marking where the brake was. And I also marked where the webbing was from the hub inward. And next to check the thickness of the web part. And it was about four and a half millimeters thick. To get the height of the web portion of the spoke, I measured the flange and then zeroed out the calipers and then measured the whole thing, both of the webs total, and then divided by two and that gives me approximate height of the web. And the flange was about 3.75 millimeters thick. Next, I measured how far the brake was from the hub. That's how much material I could get for the splint next to the hub. It was about 48 millimeters. So I wanted to make the splint at least 95, maybe 100 millimeters long. I don't know how long ago the spoke had broken, but it looked like it had been quite a while. But it also didn't seem to affect the function at all. So I thought a splint should do just fine for quite a while, or at least until she could buy a new part. I used the measurement of the spoke to make a cross-section model of the spoke in SketchUp, and I used that to build the spoke splint around. I used the line tool and just started drawing around the edge of the spoke. I started with 4.5 millimeters for the thickness of the flange, and went out the one direction along the axis and then 19.9 along the flat edge of the flange, and then up 5.5 for the web, and then also across 5.5 for the web, and then back down the 5.5. And with that, you can use the Snap to tool and snap to the other things that are already that same length, and then continued out 19.9 And then again, coming in 4.4 and then snapping to the 19.9 again. Then coming out 5.5 for that side of the web. And then snap to it. And then again, using the other guide points and the control key to snap to them. Okay, that's the shape of the spoke at the base. Now I want the splint to be about two millimeters thick, so I'll use the offset tool and start pulling it out and then type in two and enter to get a uniform two millimeter thickness. That gives me a thickness and now I can erase the center portion. Next, I'm gonna make it about a hundred millimeters tall. So I'll just click on it with the push pull tool, pull up and then type in a hundred and then enter. The spoke tapers. At one end it's 45.3 millimeters wide on the inside and at the other end it's 36 millimeters wide. So I need to taper the top down. It needs to be 36 millimeters from inside to inside or 40 from the outside with the two millimeter edges. So I'll start by putting a guideline to the and snap to the center. And from here I'll measure each direction out, half of my 36. So I'll type in 18 and enter, and then two more to give me a thickness of the wall. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. 
So 18 and then two more and enter. To taper it, I'm going to use the move tool. So I want to put a, a line across the end so that I can isolate that side piece. So next I'll select one of those end pieces and then use the move tool. Click on the center of it and then just move it till I get to the guidelines. And it'll snap to it. And then I can do the same thing on the other side. I'll just select it, use the move tool, click on the center and then pull it in until it snaps to my guidelines. Now I have the tapered spoke splint. I can erase the extra line guidelines. Now I need to make it into two pieces so I can wrap it around the existing spoke. I can get rid of these extra lines that I drew, just erasing them. I'm going to have one side wrap around the spoke and the other side will be kind of the flat top part with just the uh, web portion wrapped around the top of it. With the amount of taper I have, I have 18 millimeters from the side of the flange to the center at the top. And at the other end, have a little bit more than 22 millimeters. And so I have a taper of a little more than four millimeters. So that'll allow me to put a edge up the side that's about four millimeters wide and still be able to put the splint around the spoke and then slide it up into place. I'm going to start by putting a guideline parallel to the edge and six millimeters in. So four millimeters plus the other two for the uh, side wall. Then I'm going to put a second line 6.1 millimeters away from the side. And I'm going to do this on both sides. So 6 and then 6.1 away from the side and parallel to it. And then next I'm going to zoom in on it and then draw a line along those guidelines. So on each side, I'm going to just draw along there. Then using the push-pull tool, I'm going to push the 0.1 millimeter space down. And again, do that on the other side. Trace the lines, and then with the push-pull tool, just push that area down until it's even with the bottom edge and has zero thickness. And then with the eraser, I'll erase the extra little lines. This will make it two separate pieces with a one-tenth of a millimeter gap between them. That way I'll be able to put it on the spoke and slide it into place without it binding. So they're just erasing the extra pieces. And then the guidelines can be erased also. And next I'm going to use the solid inspector to make sure that everything's okay. And then also the cleanup tool. Okay, finally, I'm going to select the center portion by triple clicking on it and then moving it over. Then I'm going to rotate it down into the position I'd use to print. I would print the other piece standing up, but this one I would print laying down. That way both of them can be printed without support and it will make them stronger. Uh, one will be printed flat and one will be standing up. So once they're glued together, they'll add to each other's strength. So using the rotate tool, I'll just 
grab the endpoint and then rotate it down, then type in 90 so that I get the exact angle. So that's the orientation I would print them in. One last thing I forgot to put on was the little slot for the center spline next to the hub. Or the web next to the hub on the wheelchair. So I'm just going to put a line across the, the open area and then push it down 21 millimeters. And then it'll do the same for the other piece. So just draw a line across both of those sides and then with the push pull tool just start pushing up and then type in 21 and enter. run the solid inspector tool and the cleanup tool again to make sure that everything is good with the part. And then finally save and then export STL so that it's ready to print. I printed these using Repetier Host and a Robo Printer. I sped it up a lot and jumped from cut to cut. Almost nobody wants to watch 3D printing in real time, except maybe me. I printed the bigger piece standing up and the smaller piece laying down worked out really well and I didn't have to have any support. You can tell from the stringing in the bottom middle area that I'm running too hot and probably running too slow also. This is the printing of the smaller piece that I printed laying down. The print was laying down. Here's a picture of the two parts of the splint after it's finished printing. And this is how it sh goes on to the spoke. They just go down low on the thinner area and then slide up toward the hub. And that locks them into place. I'm just putting a small amount of Gorilla Glue on the small piece right now. And making sure to get the ends. And then I'm putting a little bit on the web portion of it that I can't reach in on the printed part. Next, I just slide it into place. On the other 3D printed part, there's other areas that I can't really get to. But I just put a small amount of Gorilla Glue on all the areas that I can reach. And then I put a little bit of glue on the edge of the flange. And then again, I put the piece on low onto the spoke and then slide it into place. I put some spring clamps on it, uh, two on each side, and then leave it overnight. I just have a still picture of the clamping, because apparently you have to press the record button to get a video. 
And this is the finished piece on the on the spoke. Really came out nice and very sturdy. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I wanted to make a video that shows the process from beginning ideas all the way to the finished product. But I wasn't sure if it's too much detail. It seems to go on for a while, but I've cut out tons of time. I just wasn't sure how much was too much. Let me know. Thanks.